tonight. You're going to need this. All you kids, be sure and listen up. I've really been burdened for our kids lately. And uh, hopefully soon we're going to be uh, helping you kids to learn not just what you believe, but why you believe it. And uh, I hope that you'll be here every single service. Get in on these, these services as we uh, teach, teach and preach. Now, uh, you can teach without preaching. And that's what everybody wants nowadays, a teaching ministry. But you cannot preach without teaching. Uh, real Bible preaching will teach you something. I'll guarantee it. Real Bible preaching, you can't help. You'll learn more by accident in an old-fashioned Bible preaching church than you will be in one of these feel-good, seeker-sensitive, super-duper, love-me, I love-me, I love-me, I love-me churches uh, in, in a year where you just get milk. You, you need to learn the book. And what I want to do eventually is for all you young people to, uh, to get, get to the point where I want you to have these notes in your Bible. You don't have to do these, but when you meet somebody at school and they'll say, I don't believe in God, you'll know exactly what to show them. Or they say, why don't you believe in evolution? You'll know exactly what to show them. And have it wrote down so that one day when you go to college or whatever, you won't lose your faith. Uh, you need, you don't, it's, you're, you're in a bubble here. You're protected here. You, you know you're right and everybody, you don't bother to fool with it. But you're going to get out there in that world one of these days and they're going to challenge you. And the average young person and even adult has no clue where to turn in their Bible to show somebody something. So uh, we, need to, we need to do that. We need to learn it. I want ever, all you kids, uh, we're going to go sing, Lord willing, not this Saturday night, but the next down at, um, uh, I forgot the name of this church, uh, Brother Chris Haywood's church down in Denver, Tabernacle Baptist Church in Denver, North Carolina. Not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, October 3rd. And then it's right into October, and it's camp meeting time. And if you're not careful, you'll just enjoy the emotions of church and the blessings like we've had here tonight, but not get your feet on the ground, doctrine and, and intellectually. So I hope we'll be able to do that. Now tonight, we're going to uh, do something on the seven classes of life. The seven classes of life. You won't get this in school. They don't know it. Uh, not... Not that we're smarter, but we got the real science book and textbook. And believe it, there are seven classifications of life. And we'll look in Genesis chapter 1 and verse, oh, let's see. Um, in verse number 20, this is where life began. Life on earth. Uh, no, I'm not talking about plants and stuff. I'm talking about uh, animals and humans. God said, verse 20, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. That's where all of them come from. And fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament. Have you ever noticed how birds swim in the air just like fish swim in the water? And they, they fly, they swim. Wonder why they call it when a man goes up there, they call it an astronaut. You want know nautical mean? Water. Isn't that weird? Why they call it a captain? Why they call it a space ship? <laughs> is there any water? They, they water up there. And and there is. Look at the uh, look at verse 20. And let every and the moving creature that hath life and fowl, birds that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, remember that, and every winged fowl after his kind, remember that, and God saw that it was good. Now, uh, look at verse 22 said, God told them to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now look at what God did on the sixth day, 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. 
And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And then the Lord did this, crowning act of creation, man. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, I'm going to show you something here. I don't know if you can see this uh, or not. Just a little, a little something for us to go by here. And if I can get it, it's going to show you a picture of this first class of life. There's these, these will be creeping things, fish, and then animals like dogs, cats, birds, and insects, and then cattle. There's a very interesting study in the Bible on cattle. Each, listen to me, each of these seven life classes will represent separate and distinct classes of life in the Bible. Each class would be considered strange flesh to the other. In other words, they're not supposed to be mixed. Any cross-mixing of these, these animal classes is considered counterfeit and against God's original plan uh, in creation. God's plan has always been everything stay with and reproduce after their kind. It's always been that way. God, y'all did it that way. And, and this is seen when people try to mess with it in Genesis 6 where the sons of God came the daughters of men and then in Exodus 22, 19 where God was warned against bestiality, one of the most wicked sins in the country, prevalent in the United States today. See any movie star on the screen, Miley and all them dancing around with their animal figures. See Exodus chapter or 22 and verse 19. Then Leviticus chapter 18, verse 23. God said, don't mess with any kind of beast. Or 1 Corinthians 11, 9 to 10. Talking about angels and women. Any forced genetic mixing, like fooling with genes or gender or DNA or super things to make you superman or think above what God made you or mix a computer in your brain or any kind of mixture of man and computer and all that is of the devil and is not of God. Modern science today classifies man, us, mankind, as an evolved animal. They think we are just an evolved animal in a long chain of evolution with a bunch of missing links here and there. They sure is a big link, brother, uh, between uh, monkeys and men. Big link. Man should not unite what God has divided. Men try to force things together that don't belong together. So the first class we're going to study is what we call creature. Creatures. Now all the kids, look at this. This is creatures. Isn't it funny that that word creature looks like create? See the word create in that word creature. Their origin is after their kind. Their residence on this earth. Their relation to God, they are fallen and under a curse. By the way, the word there is mostly referred to animals, although not always. Sometimes when the Bible says creature, you can be talking about human being. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, right? But normally when it says creatures, it's talking about animals. By the way, the word animal is not in the Bible. It calls them creature. Now there are classes of these, cre these creatures. First class is creeping things. Bugs, lizards, mice, moles. Ugh. You ever wonder why God make all them little woolly worms? and snails, and just little ladybugs, and bees, and flies, and mosquitoes, Lord have mercy. Why did God, because our sin, that's why, uh, uh, weasels, and, and, uh, and, and, and snakes, and stuff like that. And then there are beasts, the beast class. The beast cow is cows, horses, sheep, ox, dogs, 
cats, lions, tigers, deer, uh, a little bit larger animals like that. And then the third class is fowl. That's uh, fowl, F-O-W-L, not F-O-U-L. Fowl, like a, a bird, the one that flies, hawks, crows, sparrows, buzzards, eagles, all kinds of uh, flying animals. And then there's marine life or life in the waters, and that's fish, anything that swims in the water. Now, some of these classes of this, some of these divisions of this class uh, overlap. That means there are some, some things that go in the, in the air and water, like, like um, oh, uh, like uh, that creep, like, like grasshoppers, like locusts, like snakes can go in the water or on ground. Like dogs, uh, cats, uh, these are all different classes of this animal. Now, the, the Bible tells us that everything brings forth after its kind. Dogs make dogs. Cats make cats. The, uh, everything reproduces after its kind, and that is God's original plan. But originally, all the animals, according to Genesis 1.30, were plant eaters, vegetarian, uh, in God's original creation. Now look, something happened when Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis 3 at the garden, in the Garden of Eden. Not just, remember this, it wasn't just mankind that fell. The whole creation fell. The earth was cursed and the animals, even though it wasn't their fault, fell under the curse of man's sin. Have you ever seen these, these uh, programs? I uh, used to watch a long time ago. I, don't, I ain't seen one in years. They probably still got them on where it shows these animals out in the wild, maybe in Africa, and somebody went over, our Lord, you'd have to live our two years, get the videos like they got, and they must have some kind of camera, buddy, because uh, they, they can zoom in on them um, having babies and everything. Them a half a mile over yonder in the jungle, and they'll, they, they, they show them, and these tigers will chase these um, like chase these, uh, uh, like deer, we call them things like deer, like antelope and, and uh, what? Yeah, them gazelles and stuff. And man, them things can run. And you ever seen them cheetahs? Them things can run like 60 miles an hour and it shows them chasing and that poor little, like a deer is running for dear life. And, uh, and, they, uh, and they, they, uh, they were running down through there and, and you're saying, oh no, don't catch it. Oh no, don't catch it because it's so pretty and everything. And buddy, it does. And man, they tumble around there and roll down there and the deer tries to get up and about 10 of them comes and they just start tearing in there and ripping it. Uh, so, and you think, oh my, my goodness, how awful. How You know why that is? Because you drank a beer one time. It's your fault. Uh, 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 you know why it is? Because I said a cuss word. Uh, man's sin, the whole creation groans and travails because of our sin. And creatures, uh, animals fight and devour each other. They're miserable. You know animals are miserable, most of them. And there's a few of them that people have pet, made pets out of and made happy. But, Lord, they're out there. You ever seen a cow out there? And the tail, they're constantly doing like this. And there's 10,000 flies on their face. And they're slapping it all day long. And, and they, they know how to move their skin like that. A little wiggle with their skin right here. A horse can do like that. And like that, you know, and get rid of a fly. Uh, they're miserable. Uh, the whole creation, the Bible says, groans and travails. Uh, they're, uh, oh, I know they look happy out there. They're not. Uh, uh, they're not. Now, animals are different than human beings. They are programmed. They are like organic, robotic sort of, sort of thing. And I don't mean machine. I mean they are powered by a spirit and programmed by God with what we call instinct. Example, birds automatically fly south in the winter and turn around and come back. Nobody teaches. They don't learn that from their parents. It's, put, it's imparted wisdom from God that he puts in animals. They say there are certain birds. I didn't bring any statistics, but I can get them. I got them in my other notes on creation. Uh, there's birds that can fly two and 3,000 miles uh, to, to another, to like South America or something, and stay all winter and turn right around. No radar, no, no, no instruments, nothing to, nothing to go by, and turn right around and go back to the same nest and tree and stuff that they left. And a man can't do that. 
A man in a plane with a pilot can't do that with no kind of instruments. And how, how do they learn how to do that? Their brain ain't big as the end of your finger. Bird brain, you know. Uh, birds ain't really a lot, but they know how to fly 3,000 miles. That's imparted wisdom that God puts in birds and animals. Dogs have it. Cats have it. They naturally have a certain amount of wisdom. Animals do not have a soul. They have a body and a spirit. They're not a trinity like me and you are so that when they die, their spirit goes in the ground, their body just uh, rots, and they cease to exist. We'll get to man in a minute. They did not evolve. They were created by God and then fell. They are not, they are not taught to learn how to, uh, to, to do these things. God puts that certain kind of instinct and wisdom in them. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 21, it said they have a spirit when they die that goes down in the earth, unlike man. That, uh, his spirit returns to God who gave it. His soul goes to heaven or hell. Uh, the ones that survive to the, in the millennium will be restored again to their pre-fall condition. That means during the millennium, the, when the curse is listed, a wolf will lay down with a, with a lamb it don't say lion and lamb. Everybody says a little lion will lay down with a lamb. It don't say that. It said a wolf will lay down with, with, with a lamb. There's a wolf picture of, of, of evil there and the devil. And those are the wolf catches the sheep. But it won't in the millennium. It'll lay down with it. And the curse will be lifted off all the animals except for the serpent. And still, even in the millennium, the serpent's going to go on his belly. According to the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, 11, verse 6 and 8, 65, verse 25. The serpent will stay down. Now, listen, animals cannot talk. People say, oh, they understand everything I'm saying. No, they understand your tone of voice. There's a difference. You say, well, my, my brother Danny, my dog knows exactly. Well, well, okay, okay, you just keep telling yourself that. Uh, uh, they, the animals have, uh, they, they, are, they are born with clothes. Humans are born naked. All animals, there might be a few that have a little exception here and there. Animals have scales, they'll have fur, they'll have feathers, or, or, or some kind of covering. Man born naked. That's why a man has to make clothes and clothe himself, and animals don't have to. Animals can say about seven words. They can say, I'm scared. They can say, I'm hurt. They can say, I'm mad. They can say, I'm happy. Do not put that on that. I say, he was high as a kite that night. He was preaching. They can say, I'm worried. They can say, I'm sad. You ever heard a dog do that? It's almost like they're crying. Yeah, and they, they, but that's all they can say. You say they can talk. No, they can't talk. Get your income tax paper and let them fill it out. They're not, they're not able to reason. They don't. Ask your, ask your dog to help you pray about something. They, they, don't have, they don't have a need to pray. They don't have a soul. They don't have a God conscious. They don't know there's a God. That's the difference between them and us. They, are, they, they, they have no need to, to, to call on God because they ain't going to heaven or hell. They just cease to exist when they die. They're scared. They're happy. Now, it's like this. Watch. Here's, here's what dogs understand, or animals. You say, well, my dog, come here, sweetie. Come here. Daddy love you. Daddy love you. And he'll wag his tail, lick your hand and everything. But he don't understand what you're saying. You could do this. You could do this, Sam. Come here, you stupid idiot. I'm going to blow your brains out. I'm going to take you out and cut your throat. And he'd do the same thing. He'd just wag his tail. Try it. Try it. You dumb little, this stupid thing. I'm going to shoot you tonight. He'll wag his tail. And do this thing. You're the best dog I've ever seen. Go, ur, 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 ur. See, all they get your tone of voice. 
You understand what I'm saying? Nod your head. Some of y'all can't even get that. I don't know. You're, 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 you watch too many specials and you, you, have an, you, have an, you have an unscriptural obsession with your animals. Let's, that's, that's a nice way of saying it. Uh, that's creatures. Now, we shall now move to, to uh, the second class of life. Here he is. Here's us. Oh, man. There we are, y'all. There we are. Lord have mercy. What a mess. There's a mess right there. His origin, he was created by God. He reproduces after his kind. People bring forth people. His residence is earth. His relation to God, he's fallen. Is he redeemable? Yes. That's the difference. The word man, don't get mad ladies, refers to all mankind. Uh, uh, they, we're living in a pitiful time when so many women are so wicked and so evil, they actually resent what the Bible says about womanhood when they ought to be glad and happy about it. And even when a preacher preaches about males and husband authority and wife submission, they go crazy. They say, oh, it don't mean that, it don't mean that, it don't mean that, it don't mean that. Listen, if God made you a male, be thankful for it and be the best male you can be. If God made you a female, be thankful for it and be the best female you can do. You see that right there where it says fee is a symbol for iron? There's a lot of times women are stronger than men in a lot of ways and a lot of times in a lot of cases. Amen? It's true. Uh, but you cannot, we will not change the Word of God to fit the generation and feminist uh, women of our generation when the Bible does not teach that. Men and women are not equal. Woo! Don't everybody shout all at the same time. Brother, Danny, you're crazy. No, you are. If you think men and women are equal, you need to go to a gynecologist or whatever them things are. Uh, them, <laughs> we're not I didn't. I don't know where that comes from. I mean, they are not. You crazy or something? They're not. Now there are some that try to be. Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, but uh, listen, an average Christian is so brainwashed by the philosophy of the world and college and Christian motivational speakers that they can't even swallow the word of God. When is that? You know, you know what modern science calls man? They call it Homo sapien, and that means that we are akin to a monkey, that we evolved in here, and that is blasphemy. That is not true. They said, well, we sort of, we sort of look like a monkey. We sort of act like a monkey. Therefore, we came from That's like saying uh, a Volkswagen uh, came from a Cadillac. Because, no, that don't prove that one, came, that one evolved in the other. That, mean, that don't mean they had a, uh, that means they had a common designer. That's what that means. They had a common designer. A designer designed both of them separate. God designed monkeys, God designed humans, and humans are different. Now, I know we're living in a dime. Oh, my goodness, Lord, have mercy. This women's lib stuff is absolutely, I mean, you can't say nothing. Uh, if you are a male, you're the, you're the bottom of the barrel now, brother. Uh, we're, we're talked about like we're something terrible. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with being a man. I don't see anything wrong with being a woman. If that's what God made you, be the best. God don't love one more than the other. God didn't say one was more important than the other. God didn't show any favors one to the other. That's just God's order. And if you love the Bible, you'll take that. And if you're a science-worshiping, liberal, worldly Christian that listens to motivational speakers, you won't like it. Suit yourself. I ain't running a popularity contest. I'm trying to show you the different classes of life. One lady got mad and she said, well, it's not fair that you see male this and this male that. And Listen, I didn't write this. I didn't write it. God made Adam and then God put Adam to sleep and took out one of his ribs and made woman. And the Bible said that woman was made of the man and for the man. Now, I'll tell you what you can do. You can jump up and down, scream and holler, kick the slats out of your crib, spit your pacifier out because you hate men, but that's still true, and it'll stand when the blessed world's on fire. All God's people say it? You ought to appreciate preacher preaching the Bible when it's against the generation that you and I live in. I didn't say men's better than women. You're listening to demons. 
And I said this, what's in a name when the gender isn't known? Why must it ever be that the person spoken of is always a he? Though women's live had tried to change what Adam must have started, when we examine certain words, it makes us feel downhearted. Chairperson is a word we're called. The word's a current one, but the gender hadn't changed. That word ends with son. So we call ourselves female. It really isn't fair. Look closely at the spelling. The male is always there. We'll be ladies, you say. That is just as bad. The male idea is present still. That word begins with lad. Well, I'll call myself a human. Oh, what a bitter pill. No matter what I call myself, that word is with us still. Human. Though I do not like the word, I guess I'll be a madam. Oh, no, here we go again. We're back to that word, Adam. The truth is, we're made out of each other. You couldn't, I couldn't got here without a woman. My mom's a woman. My wife's a woman. My daughters are women. We're, it takes both. And women are men, ain't supposed to be men, and men ain't supposed to be women. And any time you try to cross those lines, you go against God's plan. Amen? Now let me talk to you a little bit about more about men and I'm through. He was made in God's image. Man, God made man in his image, which means, which means God himself was something like we are hands, eyes, feet. The Lord is not a round ball, even though he's a spirit. He, he had features and he made us after his image, but we are not in God's image right now. Surely you don't think that. I know people try to say that all the time, say, oh, you're precious, you're precious, you're in God's image. No, you're not. Well, Adam and Eve was, and when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost the image of God, and me and the Bible said Adam brought forth the son in his own image. So that was after he sinned. So we've been going downhill ever since. And that's why that's, scientists don't believe in God because they say, if he's a God, Lord, look at, the, look at people. I mean, we got so many flaws and we got stuff wrong with us. And our nose is crooked and our feet's uh, crooked. And uh, some people are born without a, a hand or some, uh, without a limb or something. God, that's not in God's image. No, it's not. That's in man's image. But watch it now. Listen carefully. When, when man sinned, he lost the image of God. Nobody from Adam... On to the New Testament had the image of God. And the Bible says when Jesus came, he was the express image of God's person. When you got born again, right then, your nature was changed. You get a brand new nature. You are predestined to be just like Jesus one of these blessed days. And we're, the Bible said we're going to be made like him and be conformed to his image so we'll get that image back that Adam lost back yonder in the Garden of Eden. Oh, Lord, have mercy, brother. You talk about shine. You talk about perfect. We're all going to be perfect, have perfect bodies like under his glorious body. And hallelujah, brother, we'll be all right then. All our problems will be over. So man, without being saved, is a fallen creature. It comes natural for him to do wrong. You don't have to teach your baby to do wrong. Nobody in here had to teach your kid to lie. They already know how. Where'd they get that? They're fallen. They got it from you. It's in our blood. And you pass it on to your kids. Say, now, honey, did you do that? Who taught them how to do that? They all know how to do it. They all know how to do it. Little liars. The Bible said the wicked be go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. You don't have to say, now listen, let me tell you how to tell a lie. Like if I say I got four fingers, you say I got five fingers. That is a lie. You don't even have to teach them that. They know how to do it. Did you do that? Uh-uh. Ain't that weird? That's fallen. That's human nature. And human. that's what the world does not understand. They do not understand that man is flawed. There's something wrong with us, people. There's something wrong with us. All of us. Have you noticed? 
Have you lived longer than 10 years? Ain't you figured it out? There's something wrong with me. You have a nature that don't want to do what it's supposed to. You have a selfish, sinful nature. And the only hope is you must be born again by the power of the Holy Ghost. And when Jesus comes, that'll happen. When a man dies, when a man dies, his soul goes immediately to be with God or immediately to hell. No such thing Bible soul sleep. Your soul didn't sleep all night. While you were asleep, your soul stayed awake all night. Your soul don't sleep. It goes immediately to heaven or hell. Your spirit goes to God who gave it, and your body goes to hole in the ground. If a man's not saved, his spirit goes to God who gave it, his soul goes to hell, and his body goes to the grave, like the rich man in Luke chapter 16. There are two, two different destinations for human beings. Since we're the ones that sinned, we're the ones that pay the price. And thank God he came and made a way so that we can regain that image that, Abraham, uh, that uh, uh, Adam lost there in the Garden of Eden. And we're going to get it back one day. And start all over again. Be ha sinless forever and ever and ever. All right? That's the first two. There's five more to go. And they're going to get scarier next time when we get into alternate symbiotic life, life classes. Scary stuff. Now, uh, there's one animal that fits into all five of these categories that I've given you tonight about creatures. It's a dragon. Yes, there are dragons. Yes, they are. There have been. They're, they're going to be. Read your Bible. A dragon is an all place, place. It's like cattle because it's a beast. It's like it's a serpent. It's a creeping thing. It has wings. It flies like a fowl, and it can go into water. Marine life. The ultimate animal is a dragon. That picture is you know who, our enemy, old Leviathan, that fiery, flying, crooked serpent. God's going to punish one day. All right, let's stand tonight. Let's stand. Let's come sing a song, brother. Let's just sing a song tonight. I hope you've learned something that you'll take and, and write it down and keep it. If God's speaking to your heart tonight, maybe you're here and say, Brother Danny, when you was talking about going to hell, it scared me. Well, you know, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to die and lose my soul. I don't want to do it. You can be saved here tonight. You can be saved right here tonight. This is not a salvation message, but you can be saved right here tonight in this service. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. If you're here tonight and you don't know you're saved, when we sing the first verse of this song, why don't you just get a seat, come down here. You can pray right there at your seat. You don't have to come to the altar, but if you want to come, make it public. Everybody in the Bible, Jesus called. He called them public. Make a public profession. If you want to come, you feel free to come right now. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd bless all my brothers and sisters here tonight. Give everybody here the, the uh, assurance of their salvation. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, your word is not just a devotional book to tell us how to treat our neighbor, but it tells us past, present, future, history, science, math, prophecy, world, evolution, addition, subtraction, human nature, medicine, it's all in your word. And I pray, God, that you'd give us wisdom to study it and rightly divide it. Whatever you do, we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake, amen. Now we're going to sing a verse of this song tonight. If you'd like to come and pray, you come on right now. Sing now.